Okay, I got the report. Okay. Yeah, I am recording now. Sorry about that. I hadn't logged into Zoom. I just launched the meeting, uh, which I thought logged me into Zoom, but it didn't. I was just like an outsider, I guess. So just a visitor in my own meeting, but my, my bad. Um, so um, I wanted to um, ask you, um, you know, why? Can, t take me back to the beginning of being approached whatever you can remember. I mean, you don't have to remember parents' names or constituents' names, but like, why did you get involved in this particular bill, H947? Sure. So I, I, I can remember uh, back in, in 2013, I was a, a newly elected legislator. And uh, to be candid, I didn't know what pandas and pans was at the time. Uh, and some parents came and approached me and told me a little bit about pandas and pans. And it seemed like, you know, the area that I represented, you know, there was a... a high number of cases involving this. And so I can remember distinctly going to uh, an evening at a local restaurant in my district uh, called the Windsor House. And um, there was a, a group of parents, a really a sizable group of parents who came and talked about their experiences with pandas and pans and you know what their kids had gone through. And it, it really it had an impact on me. And so you know, I immediately became a co-sponsor. There was an effort at that time. Uh, the focus was really less on the insurance side of things and more just getting an awareness day just to make people aware of pandas and pans in, in Massachusetts. And so um, a good colleague of mine, Representative John Seibach and some other folks had sponsored legislation to establish an awareness day, a sort of initial step to, to, to building awareness of what pandas and pans is all about. And so I signed on as a co-sponsor and um, you know got a little bit involved. Um, when there was a hearing that came up, I went and testified along with, um, along with Representative Seibach and some of my other colleagues. And you know, eventually we were able to get that uh, awareness day passed and signed into law, and uh, that was sort of the first step on our journey, uh, trying to get full acceptance of pandas pans here in Massachusetts. Um, and I stayed involved. Uh, I got to watch. I remember watching a, a doc, a brief snippets from a documentary that was very well done. That was uh, very impactful about kind of hearing some experiences from parents. You know, I remember about one parent who who talked about mortgaging, you know, taking out, maxing out their credit cards to pay for the IVIG treatments, another who taken out a second or even a third mortgage on their home to pay for these uh, treatments. And that really uh, struck a chord with me. Uh, it had an impact. And, and that, as well as hearing from constituents and parents in my district. And so I kind of stayed involved in the issue um, for a number of years, flash forward um, to, I believe, uh, 2018, uh, the, the current lead sponsor of the bill in the House had uh, left the legislature to pursue some other opportunities. And so uh, at that point, I was at my point in my career, a little bit a little bit more uh, veteran at that point. And so I took over as the, as the lead sponsor of the legislation uh, here in, in, in Massachusetts to ensure that we had uh, coverage, insurance company coverage uh, of Pandas Pans and the IVIG treatments that we know can work wonders in many cases. And uh, unfortunately, some insurance companies, many insurance companies at the time, we're oftentimes refusing coverage, uh, making parents pay out of pocket. And so working with some some really dedicated, super uh, wonderful parents, um, you know that that's really who deserves all the credit here. They were amazing. I've never had an issue that I've worked on where the, the parent community, advocacy community has been so strong, so persistent, so upbeat, and yet so uh, persistent about getting something accomplished. And uh, we kind of really fed on their energy. Um, and so we were, um, you know, dogged in our, you know, efforts. It's a challenge anytime you're talking about passing an insurance mandate because, you know, obviously many insurance companies, you know, don't want to cover that. And, you know, there's a fiscal impact to this. Uh, thankfully, we were able to show through a report conducted by the state that the impact, the fiscal impact of this would be literally, you know, fractions of a penny, fractions of a penny per year. And so that was a, a key change that helped to uh to you know support our broader effort to have a mandate here in massachusetts and um so you know i could bore you with the, le the legislative maneuverings and so and such it was it was a long process we were able to to pass um the bill in the house and get it uh, part of a broader health care bill that we were working on and while we were doing that we also were able to to add an amendment that i filed to have uh, a Pandas Pans Advisory Council, which we felt was also an important step, not just to have the insurance mandate to ensure that parents could get IVIG and other uh, medically recommended treatments for their children and for their adolescents, but also to have a forum, because we know that isn't the end of the story, to have a forum for advocates and experts and doctors and parents to be able to meet and convene and advise and offer um, their own recommendations 
to us as policymakers and also to the administration. And so really excited to kind of get that double win to get the insurance mandate passed, but also to get this advisory council uh, passed, which is now in effect and they're meeting, they're having regular meetings. It's a live thing. And that's keeping the issue alive and in, 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 in at the forefront. So it was a really big win. I'm really proud of the effort um, that we were able to do. It's a good, I think, good story about you know bipartisan. We had, it was a bipartisan bill, bipartisanship about um, the executive branch, the House and the Senate working together, and about some really dedicated advocates and parents who um, you know really wanted to make some change and were very persistent in making sure that they got it, and 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 they did, and we did. Terrific answer. Thank you for that. And you recall very well. Um, let me take you back to that moment, though, where you and Representative Seibach, um, were you're sitting at this conference table uh, at that hearing in Massachusetts. Do you know at that particular time that's a tall that's a tall order? It, this is going to be a tall order. I am a little bit. I'm I'm a lot interested in those legislative workings. Talk okay. to me about. Yeah, I kind of went over that quick. I'm happy to go into it more detail if you want. <laughs> we know you knew you had a hurdle. And that was going to be the cost analysis. Can you talk about that and then talk about the result of that? And I'm, I'm sure you must have been elated when all of a sudden you're seeing 0.003% of a penny, as I understood it. Yeah. Um, you know, um, so kind of talk about that moment that you knew uh, we had a tall. Uh, a yeah, tall so I can remember. I can I can still remember. I think it was, you know, this is going back almost 10 years, not quite 10 years. But I can remember sitting in a hearing room in the Massachusetts State House and, and in room A1 and with my colleague, Representative Seibach, and some other uh, colleagues and, and parents. And we were before, the, I believe, the Healthcare Financing Committee, and we were offering testimony in support of our of our legislation to, to require health insurance coverage of PANDAS PANS here in Massachusetts. And I, I can remember getting a, um, a polite reception from the committee, uh, and I will say polite, uh, but, you know, but it, it's a challenge. Anytime you're trying to get an you know, insurance company to cover something they're not covering today, you are going up against a lot of powerful interests. And I'm not disparaging insurance companies. I think they play an important role in, in, in all of this. Uh, but some of them, you know, many of them in this case, did not want to cover this. And they made that very clear that they opposed our legislation. Um, and, and, and so that was an obstacle and something we had to overcome. And in the beginning, it was a formidable obstacle. And I would say it was you know, a little daunting seeing you know, what we're up against. And you know, the other thing I'll say is there's a lot, sadly, there were a lot of what I would term rare diseases um, that you know, many parents grapple with uh, parent, you know, kids of all ages. And when you sit in that hearing and you hear some of the other parents come in and talk about you know, other types of diseases that I honestly probably hadn't heard of in some cases and what sad stories there are, and you want your heart pours out to every single one of them and you wanna make sure we fund every single one of them and we cover every single thing and, and we should, but unfortunately we run up against a fiscal reality with that. And so that, you know, that point was kind of driven home as I recall sitting in that hearing room uh, seeing what we we're up against. Um, but, you know, you got to be persistent. Uh, and that's how you win the day. And we were. And, 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 and you know, again, it took many years of advocacy. And um, and eventually we were able to turn that tide. And uh, having uh, what's called the CHIA report, we refer to it as the acronym, um, was, was a real big boost for us. And what that was, was a, a formal report that was done. It was a cost analysis uh, that was done to see what would it cost the average rate payer, average premium, excuse me, if this new mandate were to be implemented and we were to require insurance company coverage for pandas and pans treatment. Uh, and it turned out that it was it was mere pennies. And I say pennies, it was it was not even pennies. It was fractions of a penny per premium. And so that really helped bolster our argument that this was something that was important to do as a commonwealth, a statement that needed to be made, uh, med the medically appropriate and accurate thing to do, but also a, a fiscally responsible thing because when you balance that tiny, tiny cost against the outrageous cost that some parents were paying out of pocket for things that their doctors recommended they cover and weren't, um, it, it really became a no-brainer. Uh, so that was a big, a big momentous shift uh, in our in our um, in our efforts and our strategy and momentum. That's it. You did it. Yeah, um, it's everything I had hoped for. I appreciate you. Um, I I want you to know that. Uh, I'll be using this and I just need your verbal mission is fine. Yes, I'm going to be using I, this uh, in a state uh, legislative effort with local parents um, to show this to their state legislator, you know, to, you know, in a very short video that, you know, this is, this is quite possible. And, um, and what we found across now six states is, is the cost is, is next to nothing. Um, some states have said zero. 
um, because the number is just so low. If you round it, it would be zero, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. But um, you're okay with me using this? Um, yes, that's fine. Can you send me a copy or send me a I link sure will. I sure will. And if you have an issue with it, please let me know. Like I'll correct it. If I, oh, if sure. I got your words wrong, took it out of context, I'll fix it. I promise. Sure. Sure. No, I appreciate it. Thanks for joining right. me. I appreciate your time. I'll be there Saturday. I'm going to be at the Bruins Devils game. Oh, cool. Uh, Saturday right. night. Bruins, yeah, I'll be up looking there. Looking pretty good this year. Yeah, they sure are. They sure yeah. are. Okay. Representative Carlos, right, thank you so much. Thanks. I appreciate you. My pleasure. God bless. My pleasure.